Do you really need to wait for your ex to give you closure? Welcome everybody, this is episode 12, How to Find Closure After a Breakup. I'm Nancy Ruth Dean, a breakup coach, and I want to help you process your breakup the healthy, conscious way. One of the many ways Hollywood has affected our dating lives is thinking that closure is something we get when we end our relationships amicably. But I am calling BS on this one. As a breakup coach, I can tell you more often than not, relationships end without closure. That's right. Sometimes people just text you that they're filing for divorce. <clears throat> Justin Hartley, how dare you do that to the ever so sweet Chriselle on Selling Sunset. Oh my gosh. Sometimes you don't even get a chance to be part of that decision making process. And it's a hard pill to swallow. In my last relationship, I was the one to end the relationship, but not because I wanted to, but because I felt like I had to. I felt like we stopped talking to each other and we were on totally different pages. Five months later, I asked for a completion conversation and we had one. What I realized though in that experience is that I had received that magical conversation that was supposed to bring me great relief and freedom to move forward, yet everything pretty much felt the same. Why didn't I feel like how I was supposed to feel the way they make closure seem like in the movies? It's because closure isn't something you get. It's something you make. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how to create closure and feel confident about moving forward. Some people ask me, why can't my ex just have this conversation with me? It's something that repeats in their minds day in and day out. And in a perfect world, like I just mentioned, you and your ex would go out for a nice happy hour and chat through the highs and lows of your relationship. I said in a perfect world. But the reality is that many people we date have difficulty having this conversation because of how ashamed they feel about what they're doing. They know they're going to hurt you and they don't want to be confronted with that shame and watch you deeply hurt and even cry. It would really bring that shame out in them. So you might be over there so angry that they left you without a real conversation and maybe they even dumped you over voice memo. But I want you to remember that some people are so terrified of watching their own shame right in front of their eyes that they avoid it at all costs. Sometimes they even think they're sparing you the embarrassment of leaving after an awkward conversation or getting all fancy to head to a dinner where they have to deliver this news to you. Does that make it okay? No. But does it help to know it's not because you weren't worth the conversation? I hope so. So how can you find closure yourself? Sometimes you just need to know it's not about you that they left the way that they did. It's not because you were unbearable to live with, and this is what I hear often, or because they wanted to punish you, but because of how they were raised and what they saw growing up that made conflict or confrontation too scary to deal with. That's not your issue. But it's worth knowing and worth my explaining twice in this episode. Okay, so the first step to reclaiming closure for yourself is to say it out loud right now. I Literally, I want you to do this. I want you to say, I'm choosing to create my own closure as of right now. Go on, say it. I'll wait. I know it sounds simple, but the first step is actually declaring your intention and intention is a powerful tool in healing. How does it feel to say that? Good, I want you to say it again. And again, then I want you to tell your neighbor. The reason why this is so powerful is because it puts the control back into your hands and that feels pretty good. All right, the second thing I want you to do is write a list of all the things you are now choosing to walk away from now that you're the one closing this chapter. Whether their mother drove you crazy or you hated the way they chewed their food, write it all down. Yes, clients tell me time, time and time again that they're so glad they're walking away from their potential in-laws or those little quirks that they experienced on a daily level. Sometimes it just feels relieving to actually see what you're saying goodbye to that really bothered you. All right, you're done that? Good. Now you're in this new empowering energy. I want you to go and do something you love. 
that could be an awesome sweat sesh or calling your friends up for happy hour. Remember the amazing things you have gone through in your life. Even if you're going through a tough time, which I'm sure you are, you have great things going on, like even having access to listening to this podcast or your ability to sit down and have some peace and quiet away from your exes, let's say constructive criticism. Hell, to take it a step further, do something today that your ex was bothered about that you did. Feel that freedom that you don't need to worry about whether or not your ex will like it or not. All right, I hope you're feeling more empowered now, more than you were before you started listening. Remember that you're a total badass, and even though you can't get closure from your ex, you have the power to do it yourself. If you need additional support, be sure to head on over to hellobreakup.com contact. Let's do a one-on-one session together, and otherwise, I'll see you next week.